Welcome, everybody, to the July meeting of the Denver Astrology Group. Uh, if this is your first meeting, we always meet on the second Saturday of uh, or second Sunday of each month, always from two to four p.m. here at the Mercury Cafe. Um, over the past year, Rosalie has been uh, helping to run the group and manage the group. Um, and right now, uh, Ashley and Yelena are also starting to help as co-organizers this month as well. Uh, so I wanted to thank them for their help because uh, I've been busy running the podcast and haven't been able to run the group as much over the past year. Um, so at this meeting, we're going to be doing something we've done a few times in the past, which is to share transit stories of recent transits and how they've manifested in our lives. So this is something we started doing a few years ago with eclipses, because when eclipses happen, they bounce back and forth between two houses in your chart over the course of a couple of year time span. And sometimes the activation of the topics associated with those houses is really vivid and really obvious in a person's life. So this time we're going to do um, a little bit more general of a transit sharing workshop where we're going to ask people to share some stories of recent transits that are happening or that are coming up in your life that you're kind of anticipating because there's been a lot of different transits recently that have been uh, pertinent in different people's lives in different ways. So the primary one we're going to talk about, I'm hoping, is the Venus retrograde, which is just starting to get going this summer. We've already entered the shadow period for this retrograde, and Venus is actually going to station retrograde and start moving backwards in the order of degrees uh, in the sign of Leo starting on July 22nd. So today is, what, July 9th, so we're, we're only a, a week or two away from that really starting. But since it's already entered the range of degrees that it's going to retrograde back to, for some people, these stories are already starting to come up and, and they can already sort of see and start to anticipate what that retrograde is going to be about. Um, additionally, because Venus retrogrades due to the synodic cycle of Venus repeat every eight years in roughly the same sign of the zodiac, um, with this retrograde, it means that you can actually sometimes anticipate some of the topics that are going to come up by looking back into the past and seeing, for example, what happened in your life in the summer of 2015, which is the last time that Venus went retrograde in Leo. Um, and I've created a Venus retrograde worksheet so that you can look back and see what the specific dates were of that retrograde and shadow period and start to think about what events happened in your life over the course of that summer. Uh, similarly, between like July and September, basically. Um, and I also included other Venus retrogrades. You can go back and compare maybe if that Venus retrograde wasn't necessarily so important for you, what other Venus retrogrades have been like. So I'm hoping some people can share some stories today, either about uh, what they're anticipating or what they can already see this Venus retrograde is starting to manifest as in their life and how that connects with their chart especially in terms of what planets or, or what house Venus is going to go retrograde in in your life and how that connects up with the topics. Um, but also, if you see how past Venus retrogrades have manifested in some striking way in your life, I'm hoping we can have some stories shared about that as well. Um, let's see, other preliminary things. So I am recording this, like I said in the announcement, and I'm going to post it as a video on YouTube afterwards just so more people can... Um, share and learn from some of the stories we, we share here today. So if you're not comfortable with that, then you probably shouldn't share a story. But since that was already in the announcement, I assume everybody who shares one is, is okay with that. All right. Um, here's a graphic that shows the transits during the course of this year, just to show you where some of the major activity is. And, and this is the Venus retrograde graphics. So I think that's it. Why don't we just start sharing some stories? Does anybody, let's start with the Venus retrogrades because I'm really curious about that. Does anybody have any good Venus retrograde stories um, that show, especially like a connection between one Venus retrograde, like the one happening now and some event that happened eight years ago for you? So for example, one I noticed, I just discovered the other day was, um, Back in 1983, there was a Venus retrograde in Leo and Virgo, and that's the same Venus retrograde that's about to happen this summer in Leo. So this was in 1983, and that summer, um, on the cover of Newsweek, was the first time that 
um, a same-sex couple appeared on the cover in any national print magazine. So there's there's a, a couple of men, a gay, couple of gay men on the cover of Newsweek. This was during the Venus retrograde in Virgo and Leo. And then what's interesting is if you count forward in eight-year increments in the summer of 2015, when Venus again went retrograde in the same signs of Virgo and Leo, that was when the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage. And that summer, there was a huge uptick in um, same-sex couples who got married. Something like 10% of all marriages that summer were same-sex marriages. So sometimes in mundane events, you'll see repetitions like that with these Venus retrograde cycles that connect events, broadly speaking, in eight-year increments. Um, when researching your chronology, was there anybody that noticed any connections like that or has a story they wanted to share about a repetition or even just an interesting Venus retrograde story? No? All right. Oh, there's one? If you, so you'll have to come up to this microphone up front. Sorry, I forgot to mention that part. So speak directly into the mic. Uh, hi, I'm Bethany. What's your name? Bethany. Uh, okay, Bethany, and um, what's your birth data? Uh, July 7, 1982. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, happy <laughs> birthday. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I spelled. Uh, July 7. 1982. Okay. 6.45 p.m. in Louisville, Kentucky. All right. Is your ascendant 15 Sag? 13 Sag, 13 yeah. Sag, sorry. Yep. Yep, Maybe that's me. Vision issues. Uh, all right. So what's your, what's your Venus retrograde story? Okay. Uh, so in 2008, there was a Venus that was retrograde in Leo. I think it started in Virgo. Um, at that point, I was married uh, to a soldier in the army, and he was he was stationed in Iraq. And I had a friend who, like, something happened where she was she she was going to be homeless for like four months. Like one lease had ended, she had another one planned, but there's this four month, four to six month thing in the middle, and she had nowhere to go, um, and was very worried she was going to be living in her car. And I was desperately lonely in Fort Hood, Texas. I was like, oh my god, come live in my guest room. We had to make up a story to the army that we were actually relatives, which they bought. Um, so that ha and it was wonderful. Like it was like having a roommate it was really, really fun. And this was the Venus retrograde in, did you say 2015? 2008. 2008. 2008. So that was also the Virgo Leo one? Yep. Okay. And then 2015, I had just come out of that marriage about a year ago, um, was trying not to live in my car, was like couch surfing and bouncing around, made it to Denver. And so was living with her during that. It started in July or June, June or July. Um, so this doesn't totally perfectly line up, but really, really close. So, so, so she was living with you the first time. And then eight years later, there was a connection, but a reverse position. Reverse. She was. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Nice. So. I don't know. This this time around, we both have fairly stable housing, so I don't know, don't know what's going to happen. Um, she's still in your life. She is still in my life. Yeah, okay. she's a close friend. So, um, but yeah, I I'm not scared of the Venus uh, retrograde in Leo. For me, it's the ones in Capricorns that are just doozies. This will probably be more fun than anything else. So the Capricorn, like the one we had uh, mm -hmm. winter, last, the previous winter, um, what was tough about that one for you? Um, the first one that was in what, 20, end of 2013 or 2014, that was when my marriage fell apart, um, and was like desperately broke, like broke and hungry. And then, um, there was this most recent one, there was just a lull in my business. So I'm not, not homeless, but still like really broke and hungry. Like it's, it's just a time of lack. Yeah. So that's the one that's in your second house. Yep. So there's like financial issues. Yep. Okay. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and in terms of this current one and the connection with a friend, I mean, I guess this retrograde, the previous one went across your 10th and 9th house um, in terms of whole sign houses. And I've noticed that sometimes it connects both of the topics in those houses. Uh, but this one's interesting because it's just going to be in Leo. So right. now we're just focused on your on your ninth house and any aspects that take place then. Yeah. And I'm in a... Um sixth house perfection year which is ruled by taurus so venus okay. yeah venus retrograde might be interesting 
Yeah, so that's really important. So that's a good note for everybody that if you use annual perfections where you just count one sign per year from the ascendant, if you come to a sign that is ruled by Venus and there's a Venus retrograde that year, then the retrogrades will be more important for you. And the Venus retrograde will mark an important turning point during the course of the year. Um, so either that or if the perfection comes to the sign that Venus will go retrograde in, that's another indication that the retrograde will be more important for you. Mm -hmm. So it's about to go retrograde in your ninth house, though. Are there any ninth house topics that are coming up related to education, philosophy, travel, politics, your beliefs, um, or other things like that that are relevant? Or that's the only thing I'm a little curious about in terms of how it connects for you? Yeah, I can't think of anything coming up. Um, like I'm certainly not going back to school. I don't know. I think this one will be a surprise. So mm. this one will link to some other Venus retrograde I've had in the past. But well, the last one was a surprise. So it's probably going to be a surprise. Because <laughs> because <laughs> when I was out of the country. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Coming out of the country. What was yeah. The, what was the out of the country piece? So at the in 2008, my then husband was stationed in Iraq, out of the country. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so yeah. it was like the relationship was like abroad. Your, yeah, your partner was traveling abroad. Right. Okay. So, yeah, maybe I'll suddenly be called out of the country or something. Right. Um, are you well? And it's activating your sixth house, so that could also be work related, since it's putting more of the focus on your sixth house at this point, mm -hmm. at least temporarily this year. Um. So yeah, may, may bring in like work matters or things like that. Definitely anticipating uh, work matters. I do. My work is kind of cyclical and there's something um, uh, like a, a large license application round in New York is coming online where it's going to create a lot of work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's your current job. How long have you been doing that? Since 2018. Okay. Um, what's the time frame in which you think that that uh, change is going to happen or that is going to come online? Probably um, end of August or beginning of September. Okay. So that would be when Venus stations direct, yeah. basically. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Does somebody else have a comment? That was awesome. Right on schedule. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I think that's a good example of tying in how the perfection sometimes can be important as well as sometimes the house that the, the planet itself is transiting like it was in that retrograde when your husband was abroad. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. That sure. was a good example. Thanks. All right. You got one? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so first things first, what's your first name? Marin. M-A-R-E-N. What's your birth date? Uh, April 15th, also 1982. What time? 11.26 a.m. And city? Denver, Colorado. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. Is your ascendant zero Leo? Correct. How sure are you about your birth time? Um, pretty sure. Okay. Just want to check. Sometimes when, a, when the ascendant is... Um, Right. You know, zero degrees or 29 degrees because it can shift the houses. Yeah. I sometimes get nervous, but if you're pretty sure. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time like trying to figure like, which I oh, am. And right. my mom remembers the doctor yelling it out. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good so, sign. <laughs> yeah. The doctor yelled so, it out. I'm pretty sure. Okay. All right. So what's your story? You have zero Leo rising. Uh, right. What's your Venus retrograde story? So, okay. I'm just going to stick with the Leo retrograde. Sure. So um, going back to 1991. Okay, so I was in fourth grade, and that was a time when, so like Disney was my only like concept of art when I was young. Um, I grew up in a rural area, so I was born in Denver, but I grew up in um, Cheyenne. So, um, and there were no artists in my family. So anyway, Disney was art. Um, so Beauty and the Beast came out during that time, and it was like really like... It, <laughs> I just loved it. And I just wanted to be an artist and I wanted to draw like flowers, like roses and people. And I really started focusing on drawing. So I would look at the pictures and I would, you know, kind of, I kind of started teaching myself how to draw anyway. Okay. So, so that's like a art, 
unlock like an artistic yeah. inclination. Well, ability. actually, Little Mermaid did, but that's sure. a whole other. Yeah. Okay. But this is when we I could... actually started like, oh, I need the, you know, realism kind of came into it as opposed okay. to. I think it's because I had more control over my fine motor skills. That was during the Disney Renaissance. Yes. Area. So it was yeah. like Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. And it was like, I just have to do this, you know? Yeah. I'm <laughs> as, more of an Aladdin guy grader. myself, but I can understand. <laughs> What's that? I'm more of an Aladdin guy myself. Oh, I loved Aladdin. Yeah. Loved okay. Aladdin. Okay. But Beauty right. and the Beast, I don't know. There was just something about it. I think because she kind of like maybe looked like me a little bit. And mm. I was like, you know. And plus, I really loved Be Our Guest. That was like, an, so, and I performed it in front of the school. Like, it was like really this unlocking of like my art. <laughs> sure. It was weird. So, and, and, I was and having um, Leo and retrograde, I mean, that's one of the key things is if a retrograde goes through your rising sign, like that retrograde does tend to indicate an right. important turning point in a person's life. Yeah. Okay. So that was fourth grade. And then we go to the next one in Leo. And oh, I didn't write down how old I was. Sorry. Um, oh, I was in high school and I had to move. Um, I moved my senior year to Salt Lake City and I thought I was going to be like a scientist or something. I, I kind of had abandoned. I didn't abandon it. Never mind. Um, well, anyway, the art thing became more prominent mm. uh, again in Salt Lake City because um, all I did was take art classes. It was like my last year. I just wanted to get the heck out of there. Um, so it just became a focus and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I applied to uh, CSU um, in Fort Collins because I wanted to get back here and uh, got into the art program. That was it. Like that was just, it was just like it unlocked that singular focus for me. So you started go, uh, doing art programs in college in 1999? No, um, I was uh, it was my senior year of high school and oh, high I just school. realized that I like, once again, it was an unlocking of like, I just want to do art. Got it. You know, I don't want to do all these other things people have to say I should do. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Then, let's see here. 2007, the next Leo. Um, oh, I decided to, so then I was like on the path of artists. It's really, really hard. You can't make any money, you know. And then I was like, well, I'll teach art. I'll mm -hmm. be a teacher. So then I got into teaching. So that was, that, that retrograde was me going to Metro and becoming a teacher. Oh, wow. Um, and so I became an art teacher, like around that time, or I, like, I initiated that. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So then the next one in Leo, um, oh, for a long story, don't need to go into it, but I had to move back to Wyoming. Okay. So I had to be kind of done with teaching in a way, because it was like, it was like a family ordeal in... It was a family business. Anyway, I went back to Cheyenne and um, I committed myself to plein air painting. So I was, I was like, okay, teaching kind of sucks. It's not actually art. You know, it, like there's art teaching and then there's being an artist. And those are two different things. Sure. And I realized that at that point. And so then I just committed myself to plein air painting. And also at the same time, oh, it's funny. At that same time, Beauty and the Beast came back oh, as yeah, the, the remake. The live version. During that same one. And I was right. like, so weird. And also, wait, so, and that was summer of 2015? That, yes, that was 2015. Well, that's interesting in and of itself. If the first, if the first animated one came out around that time frame in 91, mm -hmm. during around that Venus retrograde, mm -hmm. and then the remake. Right. So it's like I recommitted myself to art in mm -hmm. that because I'd been doing teaching for that whole time and it was kind of like, I don't know. Sure. Um, so that's interesting. It coincided with the, the re release or the remake with, um, Hermione, Hermione, thank you. Um, oh yeah, with what's her name? Yes. Emma Watson, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, and I loved it. Also, I loved the new song they put into it. Like it was just you know very exciting. Oh, and also, so I'm a tarot practi practitioner. Okay, and so back to the first Beauty and the Beast. That was when you know remember trading cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was really into trading cards for a long time, and like Beauty and the Beast was the first like trading card thing I started doing because like Disney came out with these little pictures of the you know and I would look at them and try to draw them and like be really I was really into them and then it led nice. into Marvel trading cards and all this stuff well anyway now I'm like making a deck a tarot deck oh, wow. and so like I started that in so it's like the card thing and like the making of your own and like images on cards yeah, like Beauty and the Beast kind of started that for me and then like it came back is it's funny um when did you start that? 2015. Oh, in 2015. Okay, yeah. wow. Okay. It takes a really long time, turns out, <laughs> to make a tarot deck. 
So like, you started working on your own tarot deck in 2015, and correct. is that something you're still working on now? Yes. Okay. It's 78 images, and they're all like unique, and I don't know. And then like the images just keep changing. Like the Rider White Smith deck is like not the only one, and like I'm trying to like kind of play off of it, but not go where Pamela Coleman Smith did because she has her own thing. I'm not trying to copy her, but like at the same time, I really you know think that the way she incorporated the themes anyway that's a whole so tarot tangent tarot cards like mm -hmm. that ties in with beauty and the beast somehow and that like that i don't know yeah with artwork especially i mean just looking at your chart in general like having leah rising and having the ruler of the ascendant in the ninth whole sign house conjunct the midheaven i could see a gravitation towards tarot as well yes, as her. teaching because the ninth house is both the place right. of divination as well as the place of teaching yeah. and education mm -hmm. and you have such an emphasis between the ninth whole sign house and the third whole sign house which is another kind of teaching communication house Correct. um so that's actually really amazing though as a good example of um venus retrograde sometimes bookending uh it periods in a person's life because yeah. it sounds like they often end up being pivotal or like turning points for you but sometimes it's like in eight year increments and then you move into a new chapter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It seems like that that's kind of what's happening. And it's funny. Like I moved back up to Cheyenne and like, I, I, I stopped the art teaching more or less. And um, then I started moving in, into like teaching tarot, you know, just up there, um, okay. like in there. So that's, so like teaching is kind of still in it, but it's like in a different way. And I guess I am still using symbolism, but I'm talking about it differently. I don't know. How that relates but um, right well one of the things yeah. i love that this is a good example of as well is that it's really important for people to go back and study their early chronology because sometimes really yeah. important events happen really early in our life that at the time were like major events and sometimes in retrospect we don't even always recognize their significance but if you go back and really pay attention to major transits that happen when you're, when you're young sometimes they'll be foreshadowing of things that will come up and become important later on and it's usually sometimes it's through looking at things like a venus retrograde repetitions that you're able to go back and unlock and figure out what the important events were when you're younger and how they sometimes still pertain to your life as an adult i know it's wild like it started off as so small and like funny and like childish but it's like it's still with me it just keeps like circling back upon itself only like i feel like i have more agency over it now or something I keep getting, I feel like I'm getting better at the first house thing, you know? Um, I don't know. And this will be the first time that it's not in my second house also. So yeah. I don't know how that'll play out, but. Did any like financial component yes. come up in the previous ones? The previous ones, it, there was always like this, like, well, where am I going to work now? Or like what, there was always some kind of like financial insecurity along with it. Okay. You know, how am I going to make money? Well, not in, when I was in fourth grade and. <laughs> you know when i was 14 or 18 right. but like you it was said that still there were, like job changes sometimes or sometimes there was a shift and on some of them i actually moved physically like when i moved to salt lake but that year the saturn was the ruler and saturn's on my ic so i don't know move, like moving was the theme right like, actually moved houses places. right um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It might be relevant. Just sometimes people look at the houses that Venus rules, then the chart, and whether that's connected sometimes with Venus transits, like when a retrograde happens, and it is ruling like your tenth house of tenth whole sign house of career, as well as the the IC and the third house. So that could be relevant sometimes in terms of why moving and career things are sometimes getting tied in with this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. There's a comment in the back. Oh, sorry. Did you see there's kind of this rebirthing period where you kind of reinvent yourself and then you come out with a new type of artistry, but there's always like this type of expression. It's like this beautiful Venus in Pisces. And it's like, how do I want to reflect that this time? Yeah. And so you kind of just, it's a rebirthing. Yeah. And then the move with your Jupiter and your fourth house of Scorpio, like that's, there's probably certain types of opportunities that come from where you're living currently and then having to change home so that could be part of the thing as well yeah. depending on the timing of the words. Very insightful. Thank you. Yeah. So some of that has to do with um like what's happening when Venus goes retrograde. Uh it doesn't look like I have the diagram, but what happens with the retrograde is that when Venus stations retrograde, part of what's happening is it's getting as far away from the sun as it can before it 
turns around and comes back and moves towards it. And then in the middle of the retrograde cycle, one of the important key turning points is that Venus um, goes sort of with the sun and conjoins the sun exactly. And sometimes there can be this internalization process where through this 40 days and 40 nights, the person goes through this internalization process. And then eventually Venus emerges from the conjunction with the sun renewed. And then eventually um, at the direct station, again, gets about as far as it can get from the sun before moving direct and moving forward again. So sometimes there can be this process of um, looking back into the past and reflecting on how far you've come in the past eight years, um, going through a sort of internalization of that, and then re-emerging from it sort of renewed and ready to move forward again um, and create a path for the next eight years. And I think especially for you, because Leo and this series is in your first house, um, that sort of themes of self and identity and other things like that and how you de define or identify yourself through your art in some ways is why that's more relevant because it's happening in your first house of self. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. For sure. So that's a great example, though, that uh, basically retrogrades are more important if it's happening in your rising sign or in one of the four angular houses. So that's something that other people could think about as they're thinking about their chronology is which retrogrades occurred, especially in your rising sign, or which ones occurred in your 10th house, 7th house, or 4th house. Which is why I'm pretty sure I'm Leo rising and not Cancer, yeah, just because that, of like the right, the, how, how it is so no, More that's a perfect for... example of like using how you can use Venus retrogrades for rectification. Because if you see, if you had a choice, like you're saying between right. Cancer rising versus Leo rising, but you keep seeing the Leo rising Venus retrogrades as these hugely important right. turning points, then that really helps narrow down that you're probably Leo rising. Yep, for yeah. sure. So that it, this actually this is one way of me rectifying my own chart. Yeah, that's I'm right great. on that. I straddle the line for sure in a lot of ways. Brittany, you had another I comment? Think it really nails it when every time it happened in the past, she was reviewing what she's doing with her work as well and the artistry. So, you know, that's that second house and then it goes into the first house. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. time, it might be more of a focus just on you. I so hope. It'll be interesting to see. Well, yeah. Make a decision. Okay. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. a good point. And that. You know, distinction between all mm -hmm. these yeah, and that ties in with what I said in the previous example that sometimes I've noticed we're not going to see it with this retrograde because it's going to be entirely in Leo this summer. But if we go back eight years, we see that it crossed over from Virgo to Leo. And sometimes both of those house topics either being connected or coming up somehow simultaneously. I just saw a, an astrologer on Twitter just posted a, a couple of days ago, and he pointed out that Robert Jan Downey Jr. was in the press eight years ago in the summer of 2015 for becoming the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Um, and he's Leo rising. So that was the Venus wow. retrograde that was also going retrograde in his second whole sign house and then falling back into his first. So mm -hmm. that's another sort of example of that. Well, the ruler of my second is combust. And I don't know, I think I need help in the second house. Okay. And well, if it's not going retrograde in there, I'm cool with it. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah well, it's also in pretty decent shape, but having the ruler of the second and the ninth and just combining some of those ninth house topics seems like it would be the way to go. And especially with the ruler of the ascendant there, finding yourself through ninth house things of either teaching or divination. Um, it seems like that's what you keep gravitating to right. in addition to your artwork. Right. Um, yeah. And they keep, yeah, exactly. Cool. All Don't right. Talk too long. So, well, thank thanks you very for much. sharing that. that yeah, was great. sure. This was great. I love this worksheet. Good. Yeah. Like very That's, handy. You, you're the great, the exact example of what I had hoped for that we would we would find. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, does anybody else have any Venus retrograde examples? They don't have to be as like amazing as that one, but <laughs> even just a one-off Venus retrograde and how that went for you. Oh yeah. Um, right. So I have way less life, so there's way less of a pattern. <laughs> okay. What's your first name? Claire. C-L-A-I-R-E. What's your date of birth? 7-16-1996. Uh, July 17. 16. Sorry, 16. Thank you. What year? 1996. Right. And then my birth time is 7.08 p.m. 
uh, uh, Hanford, California, H-A-N-F-O-R-D. All right. Is your ascendant uh, eight Capricorn? Yes. Okay. What's your Venus retrograde story? So I have one in the Gemini pattern. Um, seems to be pretty relevant for me. All right. Um, so Gemini is uh, two Venus retrogrades ago. So that was, yeah, the, the summer of 2020, May and June was the last one. Yes. Um, so uh, a little bit of trigger warning, because I, for some reason, see a habit of serious mental health issues <laughs> okay. during this one. Mm. Um, so the 2020 Gemini um, Venus retrograde, I had just gotten back into therapy and was digging up a bunch of bad stuff and had a lot of like behavior that was not ideal um, mm. come up as well as it ruined a couple of my friendships at the time. Okay. Um, yeah. So this one's in your sixth house, which is yeah. like traditionally the house of, of illness and different things like that. Um, yeah. So you have Venus and Mars there natally mm -hmm. in a day chart. Um, so yeah, that Venus retrograde went through and activated both of those. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I had the same sort of engagement in 2012. Um, that was probably my first real big depression spurt. Mm. Um, and my first experience with suicidal ideation. Um, and then the one before that, um, 2004, it doesn't match up perfectly because I was six at the time. I don't exactly remember all the details, but I do know that my mom filed for divorce earlier that fall. Um, that happened in May to June. So I'm imagining that first six months of my parents separating and moving apart was also really intense for me. Um, right. I don't have memories uh, for quite a while in my childhood. So So that was the 2004 one, and then you said later that fall is when they separated? Um, no, previously that fall. Okay. So that previous fall. So I'm imagining that my mom filed for divorce. I know they lived together for a, a period of time. So I'm imagining about that same retrograde time is when they actually separated, lived separately, and finished the divorce filing. Got you. Six. Yeah. I can be really bad at names, but I know that 2003, the fall of 2003 is when my parents got divorced. So I might have just accidentally calculated my age wrong. Um, yeah, well, you're born. One of the things I noticed in the bottom right corner in this little um, the box I have that shows the retrogrades and the stations and stuff is we can already see Venus is super far from the sun. Um, when you were born and in the bottom we see that venus actually stationed only 14 days earlier so venus actually had just stationed um direct in gemini like that summer you were born yeah. so you were actually born under the same venus retrograde in gemini cycle yeah 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 so um not as long a beautiful of a story but um that is my pattern <laughs> yeah no i think that's really good because it shows how sometimes if a person's born on under or close to because venus would have still been in her shadow phase mm -hmm. um if a person's born under a certain venus retrograde sometimes that retrograde can um, come up again at important points in their future and it sounds like it's come up at at those points for you um in basically like eight, eight year increments ever since then yeah they've been really big like i need to make major life changes um obviously not being born uh best I, I guess being born is a major life change sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it sounds like, you know, you're still here. So it seems like some of the major life changes that you made during those times have been good or that you've done what's necessary during those times so that you've been able to continue to, to live and thrive. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Has, have they ultimately been productive? Incredibly. Um, I didn't have support uh, parents that were super supportive of mental health issues. So that first. Um, the 2012 retrograde, um, the one that was really, really hard for me, um, I was, that was the first time I knew as soon as I could pay to go to therapy and was out of my parents' house. That was like the time that I knew I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then um, the one in 2020, um, I had just found a new therapist. Uh, I'd take a break and I just found another one and 
um, I think that's probably the one where I started to really sit with some other changes I need to make. So they've all been really intense. Also, um, I have noticed that in most of them, I have pictures of starting new art projects right at the end of a Venus retrograde. Interesting. Um, I never finished them at that time, but <laughs> I yeah. started a new one. But yeah. sometimes that in and of itself can be like art itself can be therapeutic in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a Capricorn rising. I don't feel naturally that creative. I kind of create out of uh, requirement, um, not because it's something that comes supernaturally. It's just like a, something I have to do to get it out. So Yeah. Um, well, I like in both of those instances, because it makes me think of like in some of the older texts when benefics like Venus or Jupiter in difficult houses, sometimes the delineations in the ancient astrologers are about getting help from something represented by that planet with a difficult situation or with a difficulty in the person's life. Mm -hmm. And so in one instance that's coming up, it's like you're changing therapists, but that means you're building a new relationship with a new therapist or mm -hmm. having some sort of relationship with a therapist during that time is something that's actually helpful for you. And that may be part of the Venus indication mm -hmm. is just building a connection with somebody that can help um, you get through those times. And then the other thing is doing artwork and that you know, being another helpful or healing outlet. Yeah. 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 So anyways, it's not as perfect as the other one, but I saw a pretty clear pattern. So I wanted to share. No, that's brilliant. It's a great example of another thing that if I was doing this more methodically, which I, I guess I did in the actual podcast episode a month ago, but that was like a whole section we did of if you're born under a certain Venus retrograde, then that retrograde will be important in eight year increments. And you're mm -hmm example is just a perfect demonstration of that yeah and i think it's poetic that my venus sits right in the same house so right um so anyways thank you for letting me share thank you thank you so much <laughs> all right vertiles you have one what's your birth date again uh 5 16 78 may 16th what time 6 23 a.m city san jose california all right yeah one gemini yeah yeah that's all. okay so um a couple quick stories and then a, a question because this is quite an intense cycle um it's coming in so the last time 2015 for the venus leo uh actually both times venus leo i actually met partners that had venus and leo mm. and i have mars and leo and saturn and leo and there was conjunctions there and both of those relationships happened here in denver um i've traveled a lot i've been traveling a lot over the last many years but um i just came back here um this last week uh, as this retrograde is about to about to happen so there's something about this place and and that cycle and this definitely uh, connection with um, one of those people. Actually, we we created one of the greatest artworks I've ever done together. It was a dance music performance with music that I created, and we choreographed the whole story about love and relationships, and it was quite strong. Um, there seems to be something about like movement and storytelling and dance um, and archetypes um, that's been really strong with this. It's something I'm really present to right now. And that got really like in 2008, I was teaching about that. And it was some of the first workshops I taught in astrology were like more movement based. And, um, and so that, you know, I'm curious about that with the third house. I'm, I'm having some trouble like seeing this Venus retrograde, like third house stuff. But what I'm really interested in is the enclosure because I've been studying astrological enclosure a lot the last couple of years and learned about that from Chris's course. And it is, extremely powerful uh in in my life um especially when mars is enclosed as it's been the last few weeks um and i'm curious to know about and to study um this is my question chris uh the square aspects to an enclosure because then i would look at the venus retrograde like in scorpio at the degrees you know that are squaring my mars saturn mm -hmm. um and I haven't done that yet, but like, it's a question I have for you around that, but I'm a little intimidated with this retrograde because it's going to be three times in enclosure, basically the whole time 
When you say enclosure, what do you mean? The malefic enclosure between Mars and Saturn. Just that transiting Venus will be in between your Saturn and your Mars? Yeah. Okay. Like the whole time, because 12 degrees is basically on Mars. So the whole time. So months of this. Um, and what I've seen with Mars, and I've watched really strong the last year, the positions in Aquarius and in Leo um, have been just pretty devastating for me. I've, I've had to move a lot. Um, there's just been a lot of stress in my life. And it's consistent because it, there's a lot of aspects that can happen between those degrees. So yeah, that's my question. Yeah. I mean, well, I think just, you know, even that, that that's a challenging area in your life. Um, some of it, just having the IC there in Leo um, is just that you've moved around a lot and you travel a lot. And, you know, that's partially connected with the MC being in the ninth whole sign house. And so that Saturn that's ruling it is down there in the third on the IC. Um, so I think it's really interesting already that you just moved back here. You keep, you know, sort of coming back to this place and this city at different points, even though you're going around and literally traveling the world, like you were in Europe for like a mm -hmm. while, right? Like off and on. Yeah. So one of the things that sometimes comes up with retrogrades, and I, I realized why this was last month, and it was so simple that I hadn't, I was sort of surprised that I wasn't at the forefront of my mind already, but because Venus is moving forward and then it turns around and it starts moving backwards, it's not just that it's moving backwards in time, but it's also oriented and looking backwards. So when a planet is retrograde, it means it has more of a past oriented uh, or, or more of a past looking back to the past orientation rather than looking forward to the future. And I think that's such a simple distinction and it sounds really basic, but it's actually a really important and profound one because it means that sometimes when planets are retrograde during those periods, our orientation starts being the past and that looking back into the past somehow suddenly becomes important and that you can't move forward in the future until you've gone back into the past for a while. Um, so for you, maybe that's what this is about, is returning back to this past place that you lived with Venus going retrograde um, over your IC, where eventually it's going to station direct. Um, and while there may be some challenges there, especially in terms of the Mars placement, um, the positive thing is that Jupiter is also going to be stationing there in Taurus, pretty close to squaring your IC at the same time. So there's like a very positive counterbalancing benefic transit that's occurring simultaneously. Well, yeah, and that's my perfected planet. Um, Is Jupiter, what perfection are you in? Uh, tw uh, tenth. Ten in Pisces. Okay. Yeah. So Jupiter is your perfected planet for the year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it seems like the primary thing is just that. And that's interesting you said movement because the third house is traditionally like the house associated with the moon and it's about things that move quickly and moving around your local city or your local neighborhood or area. But it's interesting that for you that often gets specifically um, channeled into the theme of movement in general as a, as a form of expression. And, and are you saying that that could also mean foreign travel because Saturn is connected, Saturn is in that house, but ruling the ninth? And so like the third and the ninth sort of overlap very um, easily for me, like because of that. Yeah. And also I've just been noticing um, one of the ancient delineations for planets that are in detriment, which is also called like um, anti-domicile or antithesis is just that it represents a planet being as far away from its home sign as it can get. So sometimes Literally, there are themes of like being away from home or being out of one's element that are inherent to that placement. For you, that is your Saturn placement. And so that could be why Venus retrogrades that go over that placement um, cause you sometimes to reflect and review those themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you say anything about the enclosure and the, the aspects? Like, have you found in that study of, I guess, besiegement is the other word? Um, the square aspects being important for that? Um, yeah, but I mean, usually in closure, it's not something you apply to transits. It's just something you have in the natal chart or you don't have. So, well, I will tell you, <laughs> I can share lots of stories of transits of enclosure. Okay. Yeah. And I've been studying about it also on the level of relocation. 
because I've traveled so much. Mm -hmm. And so like having the IC, let's say like between Mars and Saturn or Jupiter and Venus, now you're in a benefic or a malefic enclosure and it's, it's, it's real. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'd love to talk more about that with anyone here, but it's, it's a really powerful technique and I'm, yeah, I'm interested to know if anyone else has studied it more through the transit cycles because I see it like crazy. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's maybe something uh, we could do like another meeting on at some point to discuss or research that more. Cool. Well, thanks for the, the help. Yeah. 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 So does it matter if um, the exaltation of Venus is in a 10th house perfection year, Venus is exalted in Pisces, and the Mars is in the 12th house? Does it matter if the exaltation of Venus is in a 10th house perfection year, Venus is exalted in Pisces, and the Mars is in the 12th house? Does it matter if the exaltation of Venus is in a 10th house perfection year, Venus is exalted in I know he's in a Pisces perfection year, but his Venus natal is in Gemini. Where's the exaltation component coming in? Just that he's in a 10th house perfection year, so it's a, the exaltation of Venus. Like that, the exaltation lord? Yeah, do you feel like that is going to help mitigate this at all? Just because, you know, it will still, even though there's not a natal planet there, you know, Venus will still see its perfected house from the first. Um, um, is there any, is, I'm just looking for mitigation since he's so concerned about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just concerned because it's like Mars, Saturn, Mars, Saturn. before so you can see what you're in for again. I mean, the primary mitigation is just that he's in a Jupiter perfection year and Jupiter's going to station in the, I think it's like at 14 or 13 Taurus. So it's going to be squaring the IC and the Mars, which is actually a positive yeah. transit that's going to be counterbalancing any of the challenging stuff that Venus is going to be getting by stationing on Mars. So that's actually, I think those are both doubly positive transits that are happening to what is otherwise the most difficult planet in the chart. So that's the mitigation right there. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thanks. All right. Does anybody else have any, you have, you have one? January 19th, 1990. Your name's Sarah? Yeah, yeah okay. it's Sarah. Uh, Without an age, but it's fine. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I really don't care. What's your birthday? January 19th, 1990. So Pluto's on my sun right now. 11.53 p.m. In Newburgh, New York. Newburgh? How do you spell it? N-E-W-B-U-R-G-H. B-U-R-G-H? Yes. New York. Yes. All right. Is your ascendant 22 Libra? It is. Okay. All right. What's your Venus retrograde story? Okay. So it's going to combine my Pluto transits, my Venus retrograde, and um, eclipses, and I'm in a 10th house year. Okay. So yeah. And you've got uh, a couple planets in Capricorn. Uh, <laughs> One or two. One or two. One yeah. Or, or two. I don't want to <laughs> exaggerate. Um, but specifically, you have some very late in Capricorn. At, like your IC is at 26, your Venus is at 27, your Sun is at 29. So Pluto mm -hmm. has been like all over that recently. Yeah, it's been uh, quite the past few years. <laughs> okay. Right. And so, and you're also born With during Venus, Venus right. retrograde. As Capricorn. my chart ruler, too. Yeah. Right. To Libra rising, so that Venus retrograde, the last one before this one that was during that winter in Capricorn, that was the same cycle you were born in? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, what's your story? Okay, so combining some all of these things together, because it's kind of hard to extract them from each right. other. Um, so with this Venus retrograde, combining it with my um, Pluto on my sun. So obviously, um, Pluto has been on my sun and back and forth to my natal Venus as well. And my, it was in my IC, which thank God it's done with. Cause that one was not fun. The sun's not fun either. But, um, so basically I had my first hit of Pluto on my sun in March. Um, it was awful. Mar <laughs> um, March of this year. Of yeah. Yeah. I okay. was just, basically really depressed. Um, so it goes off my son when it goes into Aquarius, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, then the second hit of it on my son, um, the current hit, I was feeling very similar to the last hit. It's amazing how precise I find that the Pluto transits are mm -hmm. to the minute, um, especially 
for me, and since I've had probably more Pluto transits in my life than anyone can dream of up until this point, I, I kind of feel like I'm an expert. But <laughs> I mean, it's not by choice. <laughs> yeah, but um, so basically, the, I got the second hit, and I was trying to think like, what is this hit about? Um, or what is this transit about? Because obviously, yeah. it's a big deal when Pluto's on your sun. Because it was like in March, um, Pluto moved into Aquarius, but then it stationed and then it retrograded back. And just in the past, well, in June, I think it went back mm-hmm. into Capricorn. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Got it. So during this last hit, I was hitting up, you know, my best friends because I wanted to see people since I was not doing well. And one of my best friends is also in a Pluto transit and she was also not doing well and um, didn't want to see me. My other best friend just had a baby two days ago. So she was also like busy, whatever. And um, given that Pluto or rather the sun, my 11th house is, you know, it's connected. Yeah. So Uh, you have Leo on the cusp of the 11th whole sign house. So the sun is actually the ruler of your place of friends. Yeah, exactly. So I was trying to, you know, put all this information together and I basically realized or what I felt like and this sounds dark was that I didn't really have anyone here anymore. Um, I obviously still have my best friends. My business is working in the entertainment industry and it kind of started during COVID or just before COVID. And I started to realize that I needed to that I believe I need to move after being here for 15 years, Um, which obviously is, you know, a big deal once you've been somewhere for 15 years. 15 years. uh, What year? uh, 2008. That's when Pluto went into Capricorn. I know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's also when Pluto went into Capricorn. As you can see, I still had a Pluto transit pretty quickly since it was opposing my natal Jupiter. Um, So, yeah, not only was it... The what entire a, cycle basically will be Colorado of living here. From, um, from, Calif- from New York or? From New York, yeah. Okay, so you moved here to Colorado in 2008. That was when Pluto moved into your fourth whole same house for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, what prompted that or what were the circumstances surrounding it? And you said that you ran into some issues as soon as you moved here? I didn't run into issues as soon as I moved here, thank God. But mm-hmm. um, I, I just had a transit, I guess. Okay. Pluto, it, it's not bad on every planet the same right. way, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I moved here in 2008 for college. So for it was pretty okay. like, you know, normal way to move here. Mm-hmm. Um, the interesting things, combining some of, you know, I still am getting another hit of um, the Venus, Pluto on my natal Venus as well, which of course is my chart ruler. Um, Also combining other recent transits, um, the eclipse in the first uh, Aries Libra one was squaring my sun exactly almost to the minute because it was 29.53, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, you're right. 29.53. Mm -hmm. And my sun is 29.52. So that's pretty close, I'd say. Um, the next eclipse also the Scorpio, the last Scorpio Taurus one, um, was on my moon because it's 14 degrees. Um, other interesting things is the upcoming eclipses, the upcoming South Node one is on my IC. So it's like literally changing every element of my life. So it's going to change combining all these things. It's changing where I am physically, um, friends, like community that's around me, right. location, um, bringing in other transits as other Vena, Venus retrogrades as I bought my place eight years ago. So during the last one in Leo as well. Okay. And um, I guess that's the biggest one to point out. But as you can see, like all these trends, I've been having a lot of crazy transits that are very precise mm-hmm. and, um, you know, basically changing everything in my life. And also my son is, of course, in my fourth house of home right. as well. With um, the eclipses, so the April 1 was in your, do you know what perfection year you're in? Now? Yeah. 10. You're in 10. Yeah, so the January. eclipses are important. So, and that's why I wanted to ask if just there are any things relevant with the topics, but you know, one would have been in your seventh house 
of relationships and the other would have been in your second house of finances. Did any of those topics come up at that time or was that relevant? Um, yeah. So basically the entire time Mars was in Gemini until it started to get relief. My business was completely dead and it started heating up again once Mars went into Cancer, which is my 10th house. And as you can see of my chart, there's not that much going on with mutable. So it being a mutable wasn't especially helpful. Mm. Yeah. And also the last eclipses before that late last year would have been completely in Taurus and Scorpio. So that means they would have fallen entirely in your financial axis. And so then right. things dried up and yeah, cause, and it was strain. also like combining it again with my Pluto transits. Every time it hit my IC, um, which of course is opposite my MC, I would like lose a client out of nowhere or have something go on that you couldn't expect when it was exact as well on my IC mm. or something of my family that took away my time. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, let's see. So this <laughs> Venus retrogrades in Leo and then, so you're, you are going to move soon? I think so. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I am. I just, there's a lot of steps that go into moving that I haven't started yet. So I have to start those steps, mm -hmm. but I think by the time it, you know, by the time it's my birthday, I'll probably have moved. Where do you want to move to? LA. Okay. What's motivating that? Um, business. Mm -hmm. So career. So I have entertainment. I'm a publicist and brand strategist for people in the entertainment industry. Okay. So it's a logical decision, but yeah. Yeah. But that's a big shift. It's a big shift and I'm very scared. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense in a 10th house perfection. Question. That makes my clear post. Okay. How often? Because you said something really important a few times, like you completely change your life. How often does that happen? Not very often. Okay, well, this is <laughs> it's happened twice. So because now. This no, I mean, like right now, I feel like it's a time of completely changing my life. Okay. It's not like it's you know I've Did been that here. Happened before with the move, where you feel like kind of. Well, I moved here when I was eighteen, so you know you can also say I was eighteen, and that could have shifted things. I've basically had Pluto transit since I've been 18. So it's kind of hard to say, is this being an adult or is this having constant Pluto transit? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, Pluto strong in my chart, it's conjunct my moon pretty closely. So I'm kind of used to the energy. Sure. <laughs> so, but otherwise, aside from that, I mean, being in a 10th house perfection year, having Jupiter there natally exalted, um, while that is activating the eclipses and, and the other eclipses that happen later this year will continue to be important for you and are actually going to get more important because it's going to fully shift to your first house, seventh house axis. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like it's pushing you in a certain direction or trying to push you forward in terms of your career probably this year. And that's ultimately what it's all about. Um, it's definitely career related. It's also relationship related if you want to bring in the axes. Um, yeah. uh, it's important for me to end up with someone who's Jewish. It's just a part of my value set, and there's not that many people in Colorado. So. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, this, that's one of the things about the eclipses that's going to shift is, um, you know, we're getting out of two years of the Scorpio Taurus axis and we're moving into the couple of years of the Aries Libra axis. And especially if a person's in a, cancer or a leo perfection year which you're in not just this year but also next year right um if a person's ha in that perfection year and they start having eclipses in the first and seventh then yeah usually relationships start becoming the focus of the life and sometimes if the person's not in a major relationship they can find themselves in one by the end of that transit yeah i mean that could happen. I can't speak to the future. Um, right. But, you know, yeah, it's definitely a factor within my decision making right now, which it's not normally a factor in my decision making. So I think that that's fair to say. Sure. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. We'll have to like check in with you in a couple of years once those eclipses are over <laughs> and see where things are at. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, in terms of the retrograde, probably continuing to see more things in terms of friends and your friend group. Um, right. And that, that becoming part of the focus of this retrograde with it in your 11th house. Yeah. And I mean, I've already been kind of like slowly getting rid of friends over the last couple of years. Um, so it's kind of like ready for that, I guess, transformation as far as mm -hmm. that's concerned as well. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, well, maybe that could be part of your focus, though, this summer is just, um, I know it's tricky since your plan is to move away from here, but trying right. to perhaps reflect on the area of friendship or perhaps build other friend connections could be like a productive thing to do uh, or build other social connections during the course of this Venus retrograde in your 11th house. Because the other thing is because you're a night chart, Venus transits and especially retrogrades will sometimes tend to be more important or at least in retrospect indicate more positive shifts in your life. Um, so by the end of, especially when Venus stations direct in your 11th house, um, maybe it's either reaffirming old friendships that have otherwise fallen apart or building new friendships could be a large part of the focus for you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's certainly a possibility and I've been doing a little bit of that as well. Um, you know, just to be in line with my transits, but mm. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's really good. I've been curious how people have been doing with some of those Pluto transits. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the good news is that it's about to move out of that sector of your chart where you've had so much of that recently and about to move into a completely new phase. And you can already kind of anticipate right. where some of that's headed. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes sense entering, you know, the fifth as well for me, if I'm going to be working even on a larger scale with creative people and within that within everything. So everything's kind of making sense as far as it should, but mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see my life without having constant Pluto transits direct on, you know, everything on my chart, basically. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Just going through that complete um, transformation process and sometimes right. that, that dark night of the soul, but then eventually emerging on the other side, a, a different and a newer person. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, astrology is very helpful if you have as many Pluto transits as I've had, because you at least know that they're going to end at some point. I can't imagine dealing with some of these things if I didn't have a timeline. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the most useful things about astrology is giving you a, a calendar for the different chapters of your of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have a comment? No. Okay. Uh, all right. I think Thank that's you. it. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> All right. Do you have one? Cool. What's your first name? Monica. How do you spell it? M-O-N-I-K-A. And Thank what's you. the birth date? September 15, 1987. What time? Uh, 9.05 a.m. And what city? Pleven. P-L-E-V-E-N. Uh, V-E-N. Got it. And that would be in Bulgaria. Bulgaria, okay. And is your son at 15 Libra? Yes. Okay. What's your, what's your story? Uh, so it's about the previous uh, Leo uh, retrograde. Um, one of the significations, obviously, for Venus retrograde is affairs coming about and like changes in relationships. And uh, at that time, uh, we were me and my ex-husband were at a wedding of our friends. The wedding was August 15, 2015, which was basically, I think, two days, two days before Venus went directly on the sun as it was retrograding. Okay. Um, so it's happening in your like, 11th house of friends. You're at a friend's wedding. Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, on the way back, we, dro we drove from New York to Chicago um, and... A text message popped up as we were driving from like a coworker of my ex husband, which I was like, "Why is she like trying to contact you now? If she knows you are on vacation, what's going on?" Like obviously nothing at that time particularly happened, but that was like literally I think like at the same time Venus is like on the sun, and a couple of weeks later we had a conversation about that, and it turned out that. It wasn't like a, it was an emotional affair that he was going on that I was discovering during this entire, oops, sorry, during this entire Venus retrograde. Um, and basically right before it ended on September 6th, we had our first um, uh, therapy session for couples therapy. And my Venus is uh, in the 12th house of like subconsciousness and conscious things and therapy um, and all of that. So. I thought that was like a funny, interesting, like how it transferred to the 12th house. Um, but also at the same time, I was in a um, Saturn 
perfection year. I was in the fourth house perfection year. Okay. And uh, the transiting Saturn was exactly trining my natal Venus at the same time. Uh, so it was really activating that like relationship subconscious, um, I guess, connection. Um, and I guess just sidetrack a little bit, but Jupiter in Aries type of story. Um, both times I have Jupiter in Aries, obviously Jupiter return happens for me. Um, and, um, it is the, uh, I usually get married <laughs> around that time. <laughs> so, so both times, uh, the, the second time I got married was exactly when Jupiter was, retro was, um, in Aries. And the first time it, it had just exited. Aries, but it was still like in the bounds of conjuncting my own Aries, even though it was in Taurus. Got it. Okay. Wait, so you got married the first time at 24? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. 24 is the first time Jupiter, you had a Jupiter return and Jupiter is going through your seventh house. And then the second time um, when you were 36. So this 35. is 35. 35. Okay. Mm -hmm. Technically 35 is the second time. So, but this was at the same time that this was happening that summer? Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, no, the, the 2015 summer was basically the end of the marriage, the first marriage. Got it. Uh, which began uh, with, uh, I guess, close to Jupiter uh, in Aries. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So you got married under the second one with Jupiter yeah. roughly in, how long had you been married before this happened with the Venus retrograde? Uh, six years. Okay, six years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, te technically six years, but the so it's funny because like I've technically gotten married several times. The first time I had, we had two ceremonies and one legal marriage. <laughs> so the legal marriage pre preceded everything, but like the official ceremony was with Jupiter and Aries. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So that yeah, I noticed a lot of when was I guess just last year when Jupiter's going through Aries, um, like. You know, Britney Spears, who's also a Libra rising, got married right when Jupiter was like stationing, I think, in yeah. her seventh house. Yeah. And I obviously like the first time I got married, Jupiter in Aries, and I'm like in first house perfection year with Venus. Uh, and it's like right there for me, too. So, right. Uh, yeah. So with the Venus retrograde, though, so you first get the inkling that something is not right when... The sun is when Venus is retrograde and it's halfway through the retrograde cycle and it conjoins the sun. Mm -hmm. You see that text message. And then when Venus slowed down and stationed direct in Leo in your 11th house, um, so the Venus retrograde's ending, you had a therapy session. And then what happened? Uh, I mean, the, then the whole thing unraveled from there. So it all um, came out. And it all came out. Okay. Everything was like crystal clear. This has been happening. Like, but it like basically spanned the exact you know, uh, Venus uh, stationing direct and like going back towards uh, my 12th house, I guess. Got it. So then once it came out in therapy and stuff, did so you broke up at that point? No, we didn't break up for like about a year and a half. Okay. Um, but that was sort of the beginning of the yeah, yes. process of that. That was the beginning of the process of everything evolving. It's just like it started it right there and then like, with that text message I, it's like very vivid memory for me gotcha um, and it was so it was with though a friend of yours oh uh, yeah the wedding was at the friend of ours okay like, yeah so like the wedding was with in the friend's zone you know <laughs> yeah so it was in your 11th house there's a venus retrograde in your 11th mm -hmm. house and it just comes up and the venus retrograde is connected with friends mm -hmm. um yeah that's a really good example it's a really classic example that is one of the things that can sometimes come up with with venus retrogrades is like um you know, scandals, or if there's something that's hidden in relationships, there can be revelations in terms of relationships or things coming out. Um, and sometimes because Venus is not moving, because Venus is the planet of relationships and because um, it's moving backwards and in some ways going contrary to its normal significations, Sometimes the reverse of Venus's significations can be can be things like that and can lead to breakups or other things like right. that. Right. I also had uh, Uranus going through Aries at my seventh house at that oh, particular right. time as well. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that like whole process took took off. Uh, basically, um, it ended when 
you're in this almost like at the same time you're in this uh, enter chorus. Like okay. it was around that time that it actually ended. Got it. And then you split up your assets and everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you're in this transit, and that's a good reminder that there's usually not just like one right. transit, but usually there's different overlapping things that paint the entire picture. Right. So my question, actually, I was, uh, I think, in a fourth house perfection year, and obviously, like that's also family. Uh, so I, I think it's like it's not necessarily like relationship, but because we have been married, so is does that like also relate since it's like the fourth house perfection year? I mean, were you living together? Yes. I mean, that's one of the ways oftentimes that it can relate is just through the living situation, especially if that changes or if you, you know, stop living together, if there's a shakeup in terms of that. Uh, that wasn't, that didn't happen. Like, we didn't stop living together for another year and a half. So okay. it wasn't at that time. Well, I guess, yeah. Yeah. I was very close to going into a different perfection year because I'm born on September 15th and that happened just right before September 15th. So you're getting ready to switch into Mm -hmm. Aquarius? Yeah, getting ready to switch into Aquarius, yeah. Got it, okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know then how that's necessarily relevant, but I mean, only that it would have been activating Saturn for two years straight for you, and that may be tied in with the... Saturn return that I was having? (laughs) Yeah, you're having a Saturn return, but also just it's activating the sort of tension between the Saturn Uranus conjunction in your chart, which is squaring the Venus Sun Mars um, conjunction. So maybe it just had to do with the activation of some of that in some way. Yeah, yeah, Um, definitely. I I think so. Like, uh, to me, I'm on in a 12th house perfection year, and I'm seeing all of these um, themes come about. And it, it just all felt like it started back then Mm -hmm. with this venus retrograde and i feel like a cycle some sort of a cycle that is going on related to my 12th house is going to come about during this venus retrograde because i'm in a 12th house perfection year and i'm experiencing the same retrograde that i did back then so i think it's going to be very interesting to see how this whole four 12th house axis getting activated by this venus retrograde comes about yeah well and one of the things i mean it'll be in your 11th house but then you're gonna switch perfection years in september right so then you'll go into the first house yes which is ruled by venus (laughs) right but i think that's good because usually a 12th house perfection year can sometimes be a lot of looking back and like reflecting on the past and the Mm -hmm. last 12 years up to that point and thinking about how far you've come but also starting to close that chapter of your life and getting ready to move into a new 12-year chapter once you go into the um, first house perfection year. So I'm just noting the close proximity of that, of how you'll switch into that first house perfection year, not long after Venus stations direct in Leo in your 11th house. So um, while it could be you know, activating some of that, I think it'll just be um, a lot of uh, creating a new foundation for the next 12 years once you have that perfection switch in September. Right. Yeah, and I, I really have a feeling that I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but I have a feeling this like Venus retrograde is going to bring some of this stuff going on. It's just going to activate whatever is going to be the next chapter. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, are, is there any friend stuff? How's your friend life right now, I guess, would be one question. And how's because the most recent eclipse happened in Aries, that's kind of ramping up for like major relationship beginnings and endings soon as well where are you at with both of those areas so it's interesting uh with the friend stuff i'm actually coming here today later for the poetry slam and like we're organizing like a little group of ladies that are gonna do like a poetry club Um, is that your first time doing that yes oh wow okay yeah so that's happening right now (laughs) yeah that's great (laughs) so it's gonna be interesting to see like maybe what like that brings about in my life um, as it develops. Yeah, that's a great 11th house like example of not just friends, but also groups and alliances and organizations is very 11th housey. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, that I look forward to hearing how that goes. And maybe that'll end up becoming sometimes things happen that at the time, it's something you do, but it doesn't seem like a big deal at the time. But then in retrospect, it turns out that that actually 
was more important than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. So that might be the case with that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm short. We're good. What's your first name? <laughs> Samantha. What's your birthday? February 3rd, 1994. What time? 10.02 p.m. And Burien, Washington, B-U-R-I-E-N. I-E-N? Yes. All right. Is your ascendant another... Another you Libra rising, yep. <laughs> okay, another one. we're on a stretch here, a streak. Right. Um, all right, so nine Libra rising. All right, uh, what's your story? So I have I have some spotty memories, so patterns are a little tricky for me, but I have a couple notable ones. Um, the Capricorn retrograde in December 2013 was actually sort of funny because just less than a week after that retrograde station, I was in a bad car accident with my family, mm -hmm. like vehicle rolled. Somehow we all ended up completely okay. But that catalyzed a breakup with the guy I had been dating for just over a year. So we broke up in January. And then just again, less than a week after the direct station, I started seeing my current partner. So okay. just that, that all kind of folded into everything. So did you say you were in a bad car accident with your family? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what were the, cause it's, you know, that station was right there in your fourth house conjunct Uranus. Um, what was the situation surrounding that? So that was, we were just having a like family trip after Christmas to go downtown Seattle, just kind of hang out as a family. Um, and it was this crazy, seemingly out of nowhere, um, we just kind of got sideswiped by this vehicle that was being really erratic. Um, How old were you? Um, I would have been. I know I was in an eighth house perfection year, so I don't remember how old that was. But okay, um, but were you? What family members were with you? So it was my parents and both my sisters. Okay, so this is like actually a family, yeah, yeah. family outing, and then you you got. Sideswipe. Yep, we were just going down the or like pulling onto the highway, and this truck just pushed us over into the guardrail and flipped. It was it was very fun. <laughs> and, and the car flipped. Yeah, the car rolled. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What sort of um, damage did you or your family sustain? Most of us ended up with some like back problems that needed some like chiropractic attention. Um, that was. That was pretty much the extent of it. Surprisingly, we we walked away without anything too catastrophic, just some some bruises and whatnot. Um, although I had actually, I was in one of those slightly rebellious phases of not wanting to wear a seatbelt all the time. Mm -hmm. And my youngest sister actually made sure that I put my seatbelt on before we took off. Wow. So, so yeah, your sister like saved your life. Yeah. Um. So and did you see you're in an eighth house perfection yep. year? Okay, so the short like sentence is that you were in a eighth house perfection year and Venus stationed retrograde in your fourth house of family conjunct your Uranus and you had a near death experience. Yep. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so that that one's definitely I was reflecting on that like oh that's <laughs> right. that's pretty significant there. Right. Um, and, and actually I said a near death experience with your family. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. In the fourth house with like your entire family and yep. one, and one of your family members like basically saved your life. Yeah. Um that's really good. Let's all just like reflect on that for a moment. <laughs> like sometimes it's just very literal and you know, we we now know cuz probably none of us walked into this if somebody was like, you know, generated delineation that connects the 8th house and the 4th house and like Venus stationing direct conjunct Uranus, like nobody would have immediately come up with that. But if you tried to come up with like the most literal delineation you could, you might get kind of close to describing it sort of like broadly ar archetypally. If you said like there might be a connection between themes surrounding mortality and like family or something like that in this year. And if you know that a person's in a Venus perfection year, then one of the things to do, or or actually any perfection year, anytime a sign is activated, 
always pay attention to the dates in which that planet will station retrograde or direct in that year, because those will often become the most important dates that stand out in that year for the person. Mm -hmm. And so for you, that would have been really the case for that crash at least. Um, okay. So that's a really important one. That's really good and really straightforward. And then, so Venus started to go station to retrograde at that time. Then it went retrograde in your fourth house. And then the other piece that you were bringing up was that there was some, some relationship stuff. Yeah. So that kind of classic, you know, you have a near death experience and you reflect on your whole life. And I realized I needed to break up with the guy I had been dating for a year. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So that catalyzed that breakup. So that's important just again, in and of itself. So mm -hmm. then you, you have a near death experience, you're in an eighth house perfection year, and that causes you to reflect on your current relationships and decide that where you're at with the current one wasn't where you wanted to be. So you decided to like the exit it or back out of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that can be sometimes that keyword of like exiting or backing out of a relationship can be like a very Venus retrograde thing because Venus is literally just like backing up and sometimes symbolically like backing out of, of a union. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then with that direct station was shortly after when I started seeing my current partner. So having that, that forward motion into something new that at the time was very just casual and we didn't think it was going to you know, turn into anything. And here we are almost a decade later still together. So, wow. yeah. So, and that was Venus stationing direct. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's another example of what I mentioned earlier that sometimes, especially if you're in a Venus perfection year and Venus stations retrograde or direct, something important will happen. But sometimes at the time you won't recognize that it's that important or you think it's a minor thing, but it's only years later that you'll realize with the benefit of hindsight that something really important actually happened at that time and for you it was starting a major relationship yep cool that is a perfect example <laughs> I, I can't think of a better um, you, yeah yeah and especially the more i talk about it the more it, it yeah. lines up and all the memories come out you know well, well that's the thing and that's my job here is to initiate the dialogue process and that's one of the things i like about doing these live like this is this is part of what happens in an astrological consultation um, is part of your work as the astrologer is to identify like what placements or what transits are correlating with what events, but also to help the person to recognize the uniqueness and the importance of that better. Because even as astrologers, I think sometimes we take for granted some of the things in our birth chart or some of the events that have happened in our life. And I think it's just a natural human tendency to s assume that like, everybody's had those types of experiences or to generalize things. But in re reality, oftentimes our specific experiences are much more unique to us than we realize. And the way in which that's described in the chart, sometimes it helps to have another person to draw those things out to really get some perspective on it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then I also have a little bit of a pattern with these Leo retrogrades as well. Um, so going back to the one in 2007, that was, so I have a background as a ballet dancer. So when I was in middle school, I had some of my first big performance opportunities. And during that retrograde was one of the bigger ones that I really felt like I earned. And also during that time frame, I had a big falling out with that current friend group. So that was in my 11th house, um, opposing, of course, my my son and everything in my fifth. And then I had a little bit of a, in a way, a repeat of that with the following one in 2015, where again, I had a, a role in a performance this time in college that I finally felt like I had really earned that one. Um, and also had some weird friend group things. This time I was actually reconnecting or not really reconnecting, but connecting with some people that I hadn't really thought to connect with before that we just ended up working together and, and really developing a friendship there. So, and that was after the falling out. So that was, that was the college friend group. Right. So yeah, the first one was the falling out with the middle school, just kind of clicky, not, not great phase. Mm -hmm. um, the second one in 2015 was a new friend group in college where I actually found some good friends. And then for this one, I'm, have been starting to connect with some people and socialize a little bit more. And then I actually just yesterday took my first ballet class in like four years, I think. 
um, which was a very welcoming group that also has performance opportunities. So I'm really curious to see how that will play out in the coming months with that. Yeah, so it's suddenly coming back again, and that was part of what was present in the previous two retrogrades? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that kind of interesting combination of, of both the friend groups and, and the creative expression through dance that I have. Yeah, um, and one of the reasons, so that's really striking also, because one of the things people should notice is... Um, you know, Venus is at 25 Leo today on July 9th, so it's not even retrograde yet. But because it's already passed over the degrees that it will later retrograde back to, functionally, and, and also because Venus um, for a while now has been in the same sign that it will be retrograde in, um, many of the topics associated with the Venus retrograde start coming up as soon as Venus moves into the sign that it's going to go retrograde in. because the retrograde essentially functionally just acts like an extended transit of Venus through that specific sign and through that specific house of our chart. So one of the things that has become really clear, I think, with most of the stories today, including yours, is that a lot of the topics associated with the Venus retrograde, people can already see them developing, and it's already starting to be clear what that retrograde is going to be about. And for you, it's like, the social component with your 11th house coming back again, as well as um, some of the previous things you've done with ballet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and even though Venus isn't even retrograde yet, it's like you already see that forming in the same way that if you're like driving on the highway, you can kind of like see when the highway is going to curve off in the future and already anticipate that even if you haven't started to make that turn yet. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's amazing. And um, really quickly with the middle school one, could you like expand on a little bit like what happened with that? Because uh, I think that sounds like a, a fitting one as well. Yeah, um, let me double check the dates here. So, so yeah, a, that was the, that summer. I don't remember if it was, it would have been July or August um, where <laughs> even leading into this event was kind of kind of messy. Um, we were, this group of friends and I were going to this dance intensive that was not what we first intended to go to. And it was kind of, I kind of got blindsided by them deciding to go somewhere else for the summer. Um, and we, we all carpooled together. We would go to these classes together, go home together because we all lived near each other. And it was about an hour drive. Um, and it was about, I think it was over three weeks. That these classes were held and the farther we got through those three weeks the more they distanced themselves from me mm -hmm. so they just it was this group of three and me and they just would go get lunch without telling me they would just not talk to me during these classes so i ended up making friends with somebody else who i had never met before which was really odd for me at the time i usually very much keep to myself for so for me to make a new friend at an event like that was kind of a big deal. But yeah, they just basically ignored me for the entire time. Yeah. So one of the things about that, that previous one is just that the previous series, like we've talked about before, would have started in Virgo and then go, gone into Leo. So it would have been connecting um, 12th house and 11th house topics. And while the 11th house is traditionally the place of friends, the 12th house as its um, partner is the place of enemies or people that you don't get along with or people that work against you in some way. And while that keyword of like, quote unquote, enemies, like sounds so weird and kind of like archaic in modern times, it actually does sometimes come up in people's lives of just like people you don't get along with, or sometimes people that um, don't treat you well or other things like that. So it's interesting with that retrograde, um, because it wouldn't only be in your 12th, but also if Venus was stationing retrograde in early Virgo, then it would have been stationing opposite to your Mercury-Saturn conjunction in a night chart at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be relevant um, as well. So the good news, though, is since that shift has happened, this retrograde is going to be entirely in your 11th house. So it's probably entirely about friends and that component about not getting along with people or feeling like ostracized probably won't be present in, in this one. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would. Right. Um, but that's that's a really good example. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing yeah, that. Of course. Thank you. All right. Thanks.
All right. I think we have time for a few more examples. Um, does anybody have any more Venus retrograde ones? Yeah. All right. What's your first name? It's Shayla. It's I S S H A E L A. Okay. What's your birthday? 126, 1970. January 26, 26 1970. Okay. What time? 5 20 a.m. What city? Uh, Morrisville. How do you spell it? M O R R I S V V I L L E. Vermont. All right. Is your ascendant uh, two Capricorn? Yes. Okay. What's yeah, your story? Yeah. So, um, actually, I just was doing the worksheet, and the patterns that came up with. The specific uh, Venus retrograde in Leo actually corresponded with like a recovery period. You know, like after you travel, you're imbibed in culture and languages, usually multiple uh, countries and languages. It would be a recovery period where you come back and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, now I have to save money. And um, mm -hmm. usually there'd be a major obstacle though at the same time where I couldn't come back. It was always recovering all of that. It wasn't going on. And then doing something with the travel it was like a um get gathering resources again and right so, so if the, i look at the, the leo one so this is the one then before this current one this summer it would have started in your ninth house and then retrograded back and stationed in your eighth house you're talking about the leo retrogrades i'm sorry yeah so if i go back to 1991 99 2007 2015 and they they all involve travel for you and they all involved recovering from travel coming back and either there was a car accident so i couldn't then go and do the next thing which usually would involve traveling mm -hmm. or returning to that place um relationship change major financial that sort of thing. so each one had that exact moment in my life all right that sounds like a great example let's, <laughs> let's work through them let's do them all in order so let's start with like 1991 well, if you yeah go ahead so what I would like to do is ask you because picking out those patterns, I don't, I haven't dealt with perfections a lot. Okay. But what came out of that was that certain rulerships came up that had patterns. And then from that, um, so those didn't always correspond to Leo, if that makes sense. Okay. But if I had repeated fourth house Mars ruler in Aries, then that travel thing intensified um, where I was um, where I was actually traveling. And then if I went further, where the, the, the years straddle, then I don't know how you do that. I don't know if you take both rulerships, mm. but if I looked at my where it straddled years, and there were possibly two rulerships in two different houses that I could look at. Mm -hmm. it even intensified further. So okay. that was really interesting. So we can go back, but I just thought it was interesting the more I went into the worksheet and looked at the perfections. Yeah, the sense. perfections definitely help because it's so crucial knowing your perfection years and what houses are activated and what planets. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much we can break that down for this, but I would be interested if you feel like it just to go through some of the Venus retrogrades because it sounds yeah. like... Sure, what's ever. You yeah. have a unique example where it's connecting the ninth house of travel in foreign countries and foreign places and people, as well as the eighth house, which can relate to issues of mortality, finances, uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if we go back to 1991, which I think is the first one you mentioned, that, yeah. was, that was a Venus retrograde um, that yeah, started in Virgo and went back to Leo. Mm -hmm. What happened then? So the travel was Italy, Germany, and Belgium. I actually studied abroad that year. Okay. And then... Was that your first time traveling that much? That much, which in multiple countries involving okay. multiple languages. Right. So that... Did you try to learn the languages or... Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you yeah, have a facility with languages or... Yes. Okay. Cool. What, did yeah. you, what languages did you learn? Um... 
Then it would have been German, Italian, and French. French has been ongoing in my life. Okay, so German, Italian, and French. Mm -hmm. And you started learning them roughly at that time? Uh, the German and Italian, it was my first time. Okay, I mean, that's pretty big. How many people speak like four, three to four different languages in this room? All right, you're the only one. So um, it's interesting because my first partner, his his mother actually spoke eight different languages, eight to fourteen different languages. It was crazy. Yeah, that's it's kind of, of a draw, but it's a draw in my life. Um, well, you have the ruler of you have Cancer in the seventh house, and the ruler of the seventh house is in the ninth house of foreign travel in foreign countries and places. Mm -hmm. So you said that's kind of a draw. Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So you're drawn to that. Um, okay, so you traveled a bunch all over Europe. You learned languages that summer. Um, mm -hmm. Well, and actually you were born with a night chart. So actually the moon's even more important because it's actually the sect light or it's the, yeah. it's a, at a night chart, the moon is more important basically in your chart and it's in your ninth house. So that's one of the reasons that placement is so crucial for you. Um, okay, so you're traveling, learning languages, and then you have to come back to the U.S.? Yeah, and then I came back to the U.S. I actually um, met somebody in Italy who was from Australia. who had been traveling around the world, and we, I was supposed to go there. Like a romantic thing? Yeah. Okay, so you started a major relationship, mm -hmm. and they were, what was the situation again? And it was long distance. So they were from Australia? Yeah, they were from Melbourne. But you met them in Italy? I met them in Italy. So this is your Venus retrograde experience. You have Venus retrograde in the ninth house. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with somebody, and then what? And then I was um, earning some money to go on the trip, and I was going to babysit, and I was parked at a stoplight one morning, and a cop just went into the back of my car like it wasn't even there. Oh, no. So they crashed into you and totaled yeah. your car? Yeah. Uh, were you injured? Uh, not significantly. There was whiplash. But, but the car was totaled? I was lucky, and the cop like had to emphasize to my mother how lucky I was. <laughs> so you had a, like a near death experience sort of. That's what the cop told my mother that I was very lucky for whatever reason, my foot was on the brake. For me, it felt like a basketball on the back of the head, but he told my mother I was going to veer off into the, the light post and that you, I was really lucky that I made it. But you didn't because you're, you had the brake on or something. Yeah. To okay. me, it, I didn't have the same impression that the cop did, but for whatever reason, he told my mother that it was well. It since, was he, lucky. since he was at fault, like I'm going to take his word for it. If he's actually saying I almost killed you, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it wasn't the one that it was the officer who, yeah. Oh, the, so, another I mean, cop yes. showed up, and right, the other one it was, was the like, one. All right, well, I'm still going to take the cop who hit me in the back. I was in the car, and he came up around the side, and I was like, that was quick. And then I just, I was 21 years old, and I just let loose on it. Like, okay. Well, no gonna, way. You I'm just did this. You just changed my life, is what I said to him. <laughs> you said that to him? Mm -hmm. I ended up not going to Australia. Oh, because you're, that's what's happening. It's like, you're 21, and you're pissed off that you just told your car, and that okay. that's going to screw up your, like, relationship and travel plans. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Well, you, but you almost... And a lot. I mean, I just graduated from college. I had all these expectations, right? Like where life was going. And Got it. Um, but you almost died. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, so. But I didn't. So. No, but you didn't. I did, I'm just uh, marveling at the parallel with the other example of the eighth house perfection year person who also had a, like a near death experience when um, the eighth house was activated. And, it, and that's an interesting parallel here, just in terms of the connection of those two houses. Hmm. That's so, interesting because I have Venus retrograde in the eighth house this year, right? And um, yeah, yeah, although it's like that's one of the things we'll be curious about is just the shift to that from your ninth house. Because um, I want to ask about some of the financial stuff you mentioned as okay. well. Because part of the big thing that happened with that crash is you had a job and you were trying to make money so you could go travel more or reconnect with that relationship thing. Yeah. And I kept having obstacles. So like my car had broken down. I had actually just had it fixed the first day. And at that age, you know, it's a lot of money putting it into your car. Right. Did that still had some money was trying to um, get money together for the trip. And then all of it happened. So it was like obstacle, tried to overcome the obstacle. And then another big one that was like, nope. That's so not happening. the financial issues then stopped you from what would you have done otherwise? Uh, 
So with the with the car being crashed, did that stop you from like traveling or from connecting with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was a it was a significant setback. Got it. Um so all right. So that's it. And that was a setback. So then you stayed put and didn't go anywhere for a while? Right. Got it. Okay. So that's pretty good. So for another two years, and that's happened with every single transit. It's about two years before I can do the thing I envision doing. Okay. At that point. Every single time. There's um there's some kind of there's a Venus retrograde, a synodic thing, I think when it conjoins um that may be connected with that, but we can skip that for now. Okay. So what was the next one? Uh, the next Leo uh, 99. Okay, so eight years later, mm -hmm. Venus again stations retrograde in your ninth house and goes retrograde in your ninth and eventually goes back into your eighth house. Yeah. So I came back um, I, from France. I was teaching university there, and I was doing um, research in Greek tragedy. So I had traveled all over to Greece. Um, yeah, was doing that. So it involved a little bit of the language in terms of French, Latin, and Greek. So, so you were learning Greek and teaching abroad at that time? Yeah, enough to do my thesis. So I, I was in France. I came back. I had to do my thesis. So there was both the traveling, coming back, recouping, working, working in my thesis, and then the languages involved. Wait, were you learning modern Greek or ancient Greek? Ancient. Oh, wow. That's really hard. That's like one of the hardest. But I, I mean, I know that's like your role too. Um, yeah. But I didn't, I just learned enough. Right. I had my professor, my thesis advisor was a, um, a specialist in Greek. Okay. Still, I mean, that for most people, that would be really difficult. Like learning a modern language is different than learning an ancient language because yeah. they're so highly inflected. Um, so that's impressive. Um, so then when you came back, what was the recovery like for that? Or what was that component? Yeah, again, it was two years. It was a lot of just difficult work. And Due to financial setbacks? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to reestablish in the U.S. home um, relationships. It, each time relationships are somewhat involved. Not surprising if everybody's <laughs> traveled that much. Like usually there's something. So there was so, in that instance, though, as mm -hmm. well, a relationship? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Figuring out relationship, um, whether I wanted the one in France or the one here, and then finishing yeah. my thesis. So there were like these big things to overcome to get to the next point. Yeah. Where so, my life felt a little freer and I could travel. And so one of, of the components that's recurring also is like education as a ninth house topic for you is coming up mm -hmm. during this time. And then that's actually a common Venus retrograde thing. And I'm glad that you brought that up or mentioned that in this instance. But sometimes people having to choose or sometimes being um, presented with a problem of like two love interests and having to make a choice. Sometimes a major Venus retrograde theme is making a choice in relationships that's going to change the course of, of your life or of your future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that can be a major theme. So you're having to choose between two people at that time? Yeah. Okay. Um, is that it for that, that one in 1999? I would say that's primary, yeah. Okay. All right. So then was the next one in 2007 important? Um, I think that was the next one, right? Yes. That would, I mean, that would be the next one where I was recovering from travel. So I had my partner at the time. Um, we had traveled uh, for a Fulbright that I helped write. And so we traveled to Germany and France. And then that was a recuperation period before I went to New Zealand. So again, there was like, the recovery, and then two years later, I went to New Zealand and was possibly going to move there. So, so because you would have moved to New Zealand immediately at that time during the retrograde, if not for something that came up that delayed you. Um, no. So this is always a recouping from travel that happened before the next significant travel. Okay, got it. So the next significant one was moving and traveling to New Zealand. Again, always two years later. Okay. From the Venus retrograde in Leo. Always um, two years later, I have like a major travel again after recouping. Okay. During so, the retrograde. I mean, one of the themes that it might be bringing up is that shows up with other retrogrades, like Mercury retrogrades, is just delays or things taking longer than you think. And that's actually a natal signature is that some of the ancient astrologers, when they would interpret retrogrades 
in a natal chart, they would just say that the significations of what the planet indicates will develop later in the person's life rather than earlier. Um, so that could be part of what we're seeing here is some of that coming into play with um, delays for you in some of the areas that Venus is going retrograde. All right, so that was the 2007 mm -hmm. one, and then that brings us up to the most the last one, which is 2015. 2015, yeah, again. Um, so uh, this one's a little different. Um, it was recouping from something that I found in the pattern related to travel and stuff, and also education. So I was in school for Chinese medicine at this point. Um, and so I was you completely changed like educational fields and jumped into com yeah I went from academia to Chinese medicine okay yoga. Um, but at this point I was recouping from my second graduate program so obviously yeah ninth house is a theme in my life um, second graduate program which was related to or not related to Chinese medicine uh, yes it was Chinese medicine oh, it wasn't second Chinese okay program. got it. And so this was before I went to Ireland. So again, it's recouping, but before I went to Ireland. Okay. So that was that one. So, yeah. So For the again, most part. And each time there's relationship stuff as well. There's a relationship. There's, there's a there. decision between two people. <laughs> right. <laughs> it sounds awful, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it has to do, we're, we're speculating in the Venus retrograde episode that I did with Nick Diggin Best and Patrick Watson last month. Um, which you can find on the, the Astrology Podcast YouTube channel, but that it has to do with, I wish I had the diagram, but just the fact that Venus changes sides. <clears throat> and if you imagine like the sun in the middle of this diagram, Venus starts out on one side of the sun, and then when it goes retrograde, it conjoins the sun, and then it switches to the other side. And one of the things that it does is it switches from being a morning star, it switches from uh, being an evening star to being a morning star by the end mm -hmm. of that cycle. And sometimes I think that astronomical symbolic process of switching from one side to another can be about that choice that people are sometimes met with that they have to make of you know choosing one side or choosing the other side, and that sometimes it can go either way. But by the end of it, usually that choice has to be made, that there's like a pressure to make it. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that's the 2015 one, and then that brings us to today, where <laughs> Venus is about to go retrograde in your eighth house, which is like a financial house. Do you know, are there any themes related to that stuff that have come up at this point that you're already seeing? Um, yeah, it could be, again, a period. Uh, so I went to, I traveled the beginning of last year to three different countries. Mm -hmm. um, and just just for travel's sake, learn the different aspects of, of languages. Wait, the um, beginning of last year during the Venus retrograde in Capricorn. Yeah. How, how early? But it, but again, it's like the recuperation period. So we went on a big trip, mm -hmm. went to um, Iceland and the Faroe Islands and Scotland, and now it's like buckle down period. And um, again, an obstacle for the next thing I want to do because my partner wants to change everything he's doing. Like he wants to change what um, Career -wise. he wants to do. So we're having to look at resources and buckle down and do that. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. So this one, you have like a long-term partner. Mm -hmm. How long have you been together? Five years. Okay. And they're changing their career, which is changing their income. Changing. Yeah. Everything lifestyle. And yeah. Okay. A lot of things. That's very eighth house. Like the eighth house is the second from the seventh house of partnership. So it often has to do with the partner's money and resources mm -hmm. and the availability or, or lack of availability of that and how that affects your life personally. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like that's how this is manifesting is going through that reflection and that uh, change period in terms of that. That's happening. Yeah. My, and my grandmother just passed too. So it's bringing up a lot of ancestral okay. things, not only. Her, but my grandfather so we'll have a service for them coming up and when yeah, how recently up, uh just over a week a week ago um a week ago like wednesday okay yeah so venus is already in its shadow and it went retrograde 
Mm-hmm. So, and you're going to have the, have the service for her soon. Uh, it'll probably be it'll be in mid September. Okay, so right after Venus stations yeah. direct. Yeah. Okay. But it's brought up a lot of old familiar things, people's un- things under the surface, mm-hmm. very eighth house things that haven't been said about another death in the family, things c- that are coming up. Like Got that. it. So yeah, but that's, that's been very the, interesting. <laughs> so that's the sort of mortality and other bit of the eighth house as well coming up at this time. Mm -hmm. And since it's Venus, it has to do with like a female relative um, passing away, but also that unearthing some things and that process of dredging some of that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other thing I would say is someone came back into my life that's a relationship from the past, Mm -hmm. but presented um, a project that might come up in the next year or two. Okay. That would involve language that I studied in Wales a long time ago, and so it was involving the Welsh language. So again, it's like these things that I saw just doing this, like a, a pattern of potency around that with a two-year period leading to the next thing that was very potent. Yeah, so queuing you up or getting you ready for that. And that would be worth looking into what the, what the, there's some sort of transit or something that that must be tied into that happens about two years later each time. I'm not entirely sure what that would be, but it might be tied in with Venus because I know Venus does have some repetitions in four and eight year periods. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing though, you're not. This is the first one where you're not traveling at this time, like right now, right? No, but again, it's not the retrograde. That's the travel time. It's the retrograde. It's the recoup time from the travel. Yeah. From last year. Yeah, I'm just notice. I'm just noting that. Um, while you have, there was travel like a while ago and you're in the recuperation time, mm-hmm. which often connects with the eighth house bit. This is the first one that's not at all in your ninth house. Um, um, I guess the only thing I would say to that is that, um, you know, for the service, I'll travel back to Vermont. Okay. So I have that. And I'm also being asked by the other side of my family to travel there. Mm-hmm. And I'm also being asked by this project like over the course of this whole year, I've been asked to potentially travel. Okay. So the travel component so, may still come up to some yeah. extent. Yeah. Got it. Um, well, that's really another really striking example of just the repetitions and how it connects in a unique way between your ninth house and your eighth house that, you know, we might not have come up with on our own, but hearing your lived example now, we all sort of understand better what that can look like and how it can work out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then with the perfection, like when we look at the house and the sign and the ruler, if I keep seeing not those exact Leo patterns, but if I see patterns that are even more concentrated, the same themes, but even more like significant to my life, like the happiest or the best relationship point seems to go with those perfections. In what sense does it go with them? Um, in the sense that there are four different examples of when um, Mars is the ruler in the fourth and Aries. And then two examples where Mars is in the fourth and Aries, but then also it's that straddle year where there's Venus in the fifth and Taurus. So you're saying some of the retrograde years when you were in a fourth house perfection year stood out as being more important than yeah. others? So like 97 and 2009 have that overlap because they go into two different years so they could possibly have two different rulers so So, if i'm looking at that right if i'm working with that correctly so 97 so you're talking about looking outside of the venus retrograde and leo series and looking at other series right yeah so if i'm looking at patterns then the perfections had patterns is that something to work with yeah, so perfections also have similar repetitions, but it's in 12-year periods because the perfections are on a 12-year cycle. So right. you do a very similar process. And we've done sort of workshops on that before where you just, if you identify a theme in one 12-year period, then you look back in 12-year increments to see if that's come up in similar ways. And then you can similarly kind of project that out in the future to anticipate what the next perfection year will be like. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's outside the Leo, but that was interesting doing this workshop. Yeah, well, that's, and I think that's a really good, that's a great note to end yes. on, which is that one of the key, probably the most important principle for making predictions with astrology is studying um, repetitions of patterns in the past 
figuring out what a person's astrological patterns and repetitions are, and then using that to project it out to the future. And if you do that, you can truly predict events in the future. And even if you can't predict it with the type of precision, because it's not like looking into a crystal ball and like seeing a movie of what's exactly going to happen, you can still, I think we've seen through this, like identify some really striking rep- repetitions and patterns in a person's life and to be able to state things that are going to come up in the future for a person just based on astrology and just based on your understanding of a person's chronology there's something that's really incredible about that and that's you know mm-hmm. the power that astrology has and that's what we're doing here as astrologers when we try to use astrology for pred- prediction so um, yeah so thanks for that was a really good example of that and finding mm-hmm. those patterns Thank you. All right. So, um, so it's four o'clock. So I think we're out of time for this this meeting of the Denver Astrology Group. I never know when we do these meetings. Like it makes me kind of nervous getting up here because we don't prepare ahead of time, and I'm somebody that likes to prepare ahead of time and know exactly what's going to be said and if it's going to be like a good podcast or what have you. So I always have some trepidation going trepidation going into these, but. Once again, as with all previous times we've done this, this went really spectacularly well, and I'm really surprised and happy with how good all of the examples were that everybody shared. So first thing, just thanks everybody that shared your example and your stories with us in this meeting. All right, so I think we all learned a lot here today. Um, that was really productive. We saw different ways that this stuff can manifest, and we've got some good um, Things to look out for now. I think each of us in our own charts, we now know what to pay attention to, what to look out for in order to see what this Venus retrograde is going to be for each of us coming up in the future. So everybody pay attention to it, and hopefully we can share some stories and comments um, in the future and perhaps check in again maybe in September once this Venus retrograde is over and come back and see if we've had any new stories since that time in order to... um, yeah, learn more together collectively as part of our research as astrologers. So I think that's it for this meeting. So thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll be back again next month, uh, topic to be decided, but we'll uh, do this again at some point and otherwise meet here at the Mercury Cafe next month in August. So good luck with your Venus retrograde this this month and this summer. Special thanks to all the patrons that helped to support the production of this episode of the podcast through our page on patreon.com. In particular, shout out to the patrons on our producers tier, including Thomas Miller, Catherine Conroy, Christy Moe, Ariana Amour, Mandy Ray, Angelique Nambo, Issa Sabah, Jake Otero, Mimi Stargazer, and Jean Marie Kaplan. If you appreciate the work I'm doing here on the podcast and you'd like to find a way to support it, then please consider becoming a patron through our page on patreon.com. In exchange, you can get access to bonus content that's only available to patrons of the podcast, such as early access to new episodes, the ability to attend the live recording of the monthly forecast episodes, our monthly Auspicious Elections podcast, or another exclusive podcast series called the Casual Astrology Podcast, or you can even get your name listed in the credits at the end of each episode. For more information, visit patreon.com slash astrology podcast. If you're looking to get an astrological consultation, we have a list of recommended astrologers at theastrologypodcast.com slash consultations. The astrologers on the list are friends of the podcast that have been featured in different episodes over the years, and they have different specialties such as natal astrology, electional astrology, sinistry, rectification, or horary astrology. You can get a 10% discount when you book a consultation with one of the astrologers on our list by using the promo code ASTROLOGYPODCAST. The astrology software that we use and recommend here on the podcast is called Solar Fire for Windows, which is available for the PC at alabe.com. Use the promo code AP15 to get a 15% discount. For Mac users, we recommend a software program called Astro Gold for Mac OS, which is from the creators of Solar Fire for PC, and it includes both modern and traditional techniques. You can find out more information at astrogold.io, and you can use the promo code ASTROPODCAST15 to get a 15% discount. If you'd like to learn more about my approach to astrology, then I'd recommend checking out my book titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune where I go over the history, philosophy, and techniques of ancient astrology 
taking people from beginner up through intermediate and advanced techniques for reading birth charts. You can get a print copy of the book through Amazon or other online retailers, or there's an ebook version available through Google Books. If you're really looking to expand your studies of astrology, then I would recommend my Hellenistic Astrology course, which is an online course on ancient astrology where I take people through basic concepts up through intermediate and advanced techniques for reading birth charts. There's over 100 hours of video lectures as well as guided readings of ancient texts, and by the time you finish the course, you will have a strong foundation in how to read birth charts as well as make predictions. You can find out more information at courses.theastrologyschool.com. And finally, thanks to our sponsors, including The Mountain Astrologer magazine, which is a quarterly astrology magazine which you can read in print or online at mountainastrologer.com.